So good afternoon, everybody. Um, so today I will talk about my PhD work on the multi-scale description of the mechanical behavior of a cellular composite material under severe loadings. This work was an application to cork agglomerates for aeronautical purposes. Um, so, as you may certainly know, uh, materials evolve since a lot of time, but uh, until the 20th century, um, the evolution was quite slow. But uh, since, uh, since then, uh, we have observed a rapid development of new materials with the introduction of synthetic polymeric materials. As you can see uh, before, uh, the natural cellular materials uh, were, were the only one materials with a cellular um, structure. But then with the introduction of synthetic polymer material, uh, we have observed new forms. But as you can see here, natural material um, are still competitive um, between uh, this, um, this, uh, in this rapid development. Furthermore, natural materials are also interesting uh, for envir environmental constraints as uh, the new rich regulation uh, have to uh, limit the, um, the hazard of materials and also to limit the greenhouse gas emission uh, by um, making it uh, lighter. So, for example, uh, in my thesis, um, we were interested in the hair entry of a power unit of an helicopter. And cork materials were considered because uh, this material is fire resistant, sound is a sound and a thermal insulator, and also uh, is quite light. But furthermore, uh, this kind of materials uh, is also a good mechanical energy absorber. So a collaborative research project was created between the IDESEM in Bordeaux, Safran Power Unit, and Liège HPK, which is a small um, company uh, that works on cork materials. And we um, elaborate reinforced cork composites for um, aeronautical application. There is a lot of cork-based composites, and uh, so the one that we know a lot uh, in Bordeaux is uh, natural cork for um, wine bottle. But also, uh, cork can be present in materials as uh, small particles for reinforcements and um, energy absorption um, so, uh, devices. But here, uh, we, are, um, uh, we were interested in cork agglomerates, which is uh, mainly uh, made of cork particles. But uh, those particles are um, attached to each other with a small, very small amount of resin. So uh, the material that uh, we studied uh, was observed at several scales, because here we have the scale of the agglomerate, the scales of the bead, and uh, if we go uh, so uh, closer, we can observe the cell structure um, of the cork, and then uh, a little bit closer, we can see that uh, the cell walls of the cork uh, can be also considered as composite materials. So the resulting materials here observed with a scanning electron microscope uh, is quite intricate because we have porosities, we have the bead structure, and as um, cork as an anisotropic um, organization of its, of its cells, we have several directions. Here the tangential direction, and here we can observe the radial direction. So the main question of my PhD was to study the influence of this multi-scale structure on the emergent mechanical behavior of agglomerates under severe loadings. For that, um, I um, studied first the cork agglomerate structure, thanks to optical microscopy, uh, scanning electron microscopy, but also a lot with X-ray tomography, because those materials uh, are always organized in the volume, so we need 3D techniques to study it. So I studied uh, this material at the bit scales and at the scale scales. And then uh, I, um, I studied the structure relation, um, the structure properties relationship by um, so several uh, loadings as compression, tension until failure in quasi-static or cyclic tests. 
And after that, uh, I, in, uh, I was interested uh, in the strain rate influence, as you can see here, because this material is really, uh, is very dependent of the strain rate. So from quasi-static to dynamic test with flywheel or Hopkinson pressure bar. And as we have a small amount of time, I will now uh, focus myself on the strain rate influence and more precisely on why this material has such um, a strain rate dependency. So as you can see here, uh, our material is a composite and then is uh, made of um, our coke, which is an architectural uh, material, but also is made of a small amount of resin uh, between the cork beads and which is placed at the interfaces. And, and then, so each one of these uh, components um, have a, a strain rate dependence. So uh, the interfaces are a polymer, so it's expected to be uh, dependent uh, from of strain rate and temperature. And cork, um, as it's architectured, it can have a structure effect, effect in the strain rate dependency. And furthermore, as uh, cork is um, polymeric materials, it is also dependent um, at the cell wall scale uh, over the strain rate and temperature. So the question now is uh, to, is it possible to experimentally decorrelate such effects? As you can see, uh, it's, uh, the, um, this is the behavior of uh, typical behavior of uh, cellular materials with three phases, the elastic part, then the plateau and the densification. So the plateau appears when we have instabilities appearing at the microscopic scale. And until then, we can make uh, the hypothesis that the only uh, the material um, influence the mechanical material um, behavior. So here we made uh, a second hypothesis that um, if we uh, solicitate the material uh, at infinitesimal strains, we will not have a structure effect. So if we study uh, the material at sufficient low strains, for example, um, so uh, this kind of strain with dynamic mechanical analysis, uh, we can characterize the mechanical behavior of the material uh, without the structure effect. And so we use uh, dynamic mechanical analysis uh, in order to um, study the time temperature dependence of this material at small rain, at, at small strain. And for that, uh, so this kind of test give us uh, after uh, so an harmonic signal, the complex modulus of the material, which is made of the storage modulus, uh, which um, so uh, gives the ability of the material to store elastic energy, and also the loss modulus, which um, characterizes the ability to dissipate energy as heat. And then uh, we can uh, so set the loss factor, which is just um, the ratio of both parameters. So here you can see uh, the DMA results for storage modulus and loss modulus at several temperatures and uh, with a frequency sweep. So this kind of curves, you can um, so make a, a single curve uh, named the master curve here uh, with the storage modulus. And uh, these materials, um, this uh, kind of curves gives us um, so the mechanical behavior under a really uh, large um, range of frequencies. And by, uh, so by having this kind of curve, um, so uh, you, um, to obtain this curve, you have to use shift factors by moving each curve uh, in order to obtain this master curve. And here you can uh, so draw the shift, factor, the shift factors um, uh, depending on the temperature. This is uh, the time temperature superposition for um, so small strains without the structure effect. The next step in our uh, study was to study the time temperature superposition in a large strain. Therefore, uh, the structural effect with a cell buckling will be there. 
So for that, we used a flywheel that you can see here, which is a really uh, heavy uh, wheel that uh, turn and then uh, can the, the hammer smash here the, the cross piece and induce compression of our samples at relatively um, so constant strain rate. But now in order to, to study the time temperature superposition, we have uh, to control uh, the temperature too. That's why um, I conceived um, um, a new setup in order to, to make dynamic tests at control temperature. So for that, uh, I had to conceive a really small uh, thermal chamber around um, the compression uh, area. And uh, an Arduino microcontroller was here uh, to set the temperature um, either with, um, with nitrogen or uh, with, um, with resistance. So as you can see here, it's a dynamic test uh, of cork samples at uh, either high temperature or at low temperature. And uh, you can see that um, several mechanisms, uh, especially of fracture, are happening at low temperature. And it's uh, then very important to characterize our material under strain rate and temperature. We were, uh, we were able to find uh, so time temperature superposition under la large strain, as you can see here, either uh, at uh, high temperature in dynamic versus quasi-static or in dynamic versus cold in quasi-static. These two um, couple of curves gives us also um, the, some shift factors that we can compare to the first results. So, in orange and blue, we have the shift factors for the small strain. And in red and black, we have the shift factors for the uh, large strain with a structure effect. Here, we see that uh, for low temperature, uh, we have quite the same thing. But uh, for high temperatures, we can observe differences in shift factors. That means that um, if, we if we add only the material effects uh, in order to obtain, obtain this kind of um, equivalence, the, um, so uh, the, the strain rate would have um, to be a, a lot larger than uh, that this effect. And this means that at high temperature, there is a possible presence of a structural effect. Furthermore, you can see that above uh, so uh, 0 0.3 uh, strain, we have uh, differences between the two curves, and uh, it's um, possible uh, that uh, it's due to the gas effect, but there is uh, still a research that needs to be done on this area. So, uh, if we, um, so if we uh, conclude on this topic, during my PhD work, uh, I'm, so I was interested in the influence of the multi-scale structure of the emergent mechanical behavior of agglomerates under severe loadings. And so I published work on the agglomerate structure at several scales of the agglomerate materials. And I also published some work about the structure relationship, um, the structure properties relationship uh, of these materials. And uh, now my work uh, about the strain rate influence is now under review. To go, to go further on this work, so I um, initiated a, a work of modelization by using this discrete element modelization. So why uh, this kind of, uh, of modelization is because we are considering here a heterogeneous material with a nonlinear uh, behavior at large strength at large strain under dynamic loading. Therefore, it was for us the best way to, to simulate our behavior. Um, so my modelization uh, will be based on uh, by considering in my agglomerate each cell of each cell of cork and by giving it um, so a nonlinear behavior. But right now, uh, so it's uh, mostly uh, in the elastic part. But here you can see uh, a first, um, so a first sample that was numerically made with beads and cells and interfaces of my samples. So thank you for for your attention.